ओम ज्ञान निरंधस्यनंजनशलाक चक्षुर्मील तस्म श्री गुरव His many songs in praise of Krishna, calling out to Krishna, some of which are very well known. In our Iskon, we regularly sing Jai Radha Madhava, Shri Prabhupada, sang this daily for class. This a song of Sri Lavaku or Thako. <coughs> In the evening, Gaur Arati is also composed by him. Yashamati Nandana Brajavara Nagara. This is also composed by Bhakti Rav Thakur. Before taking prasad, we recite Sharira Vidya Jal. It's also a prayer by Bhakti Rav Thakur. It's one of several actually that he composed for honoring prasad. There are many others also and I got printed out a few here, which are not very well known, not so well known as well. But here they are. If you can pass this out, and we can we can sing one or two. It may be a little difficult for those of you who are not accustomed to singing songs to sing them. But by doing so, we are blessed by Sula Bhakti Rao Thako. We have nothing to offer him. He is fully perfect in Krishna consciousness, but we can please him by accepting the gifts which he has given. So, by singing these songs, we worship him as Ganga is worshipped. The river Ganga is worshipped, of course. That might sound like. Nature worship or spirit worship, but it's actually on a much higher level. Those who can appreciate Ganga as the great devotee of Krishna, they worship her. Or all there are different levels of worshiping from people who understand. But basically, everyone in what nowadays is called Hindu culture. For want of a better term, they respect Ganga. It's very difficult to say what is a Hindu, but those who are pious Hindus, one thing that they all do pretty much is to respect Ganga, even if they don't live anywhere near Ganga. River Ganges, the English name is Ganges, the Anglicization. So to worship the river Ganga, one. Enters the Ganga for bathing. Nowadays we think that bathing means to go in a shower in your bathroom, or whatever they call it in America. What's it called? Bathroom. Same. Yeah. Okay. And uh, that's how you bathe. But the best system is there are different ways of doing it, which are mentioned in Shastra, in the scriptures. And the best way is to bathe in a River, especially a holy river, and the best of all rivers is the Ganga. Although better than best is the Yamuna. There's best and there's better than best. So uh, you could just sit around a little bit because you're sitting, showing your back to the deities. Yeah. So uh, the, bathing in the uh, one bathes in the Ganga by entering and. Immersing three, you go go down under, hold your nose, and go under three, t- one, two, three times, and then Ganga is to be worshipped by taking some water and offering it back. We offer to her what is hers. When we take a little water from the Ganga, she's not diminished. It's a huge river. By taking from her, she doesn't lose anything, and by offering it back, she's so great. A little palmful of water won't make any difference to her, but she's pleased with that worship. So, in the same way, we worship Shiva Bhakti. We can worship Shiva Bhakti Rao Thakur by singing the songs that he composed in glorification of Krishna. 
he will be pleased and we will be benefited by the uh, expressions of pure Krishna consciousness which he has given us. So, uh, which songs are there? Let me see. They're all mixed up. Oh dear. That's what I, mean. I was going to ask you. Nivedana uh, Kori. Oh, wait a minute. That was, yeah, let's see. Dara Putra. We can begin with that. I think there should be more copies of that. Yes, yes, I found that. Dara Putra. You can look for that. In many of these songs, including the one which we're about to sing, Srila Bhaktivinoda of Thakur takes the position of a conditioned soul. He, he speaks as if he's one of us who is bound in material life. But we can understand from the very fact that he composed so many songs in glorification of Krishna that his heart is full of pure love for Krishna. You don't, you don't write song after song, poem after so many poems on the same subject unless you're really into it. Oh, the next song after this. Oh, I didn't print that out. That's such a nice song. Anyway, let's sing this one. So, actually, I'm... Better to give the translation before we begin. Have you all got the song sheet? We need some over here. Dara putra nidja deha kutumba palane sarvatu sarvada bekulami chinu mane mane. So uh, he says that I'm always anxious thinking how to maintain my wife, sons, my own body, and all my relatives. Chinu. What does that mean? Is there any translation? I don't get that. Word. Chinu mane mane. I'm always anxious. Beku. Sarvada beku means I'm always anxious. Is there any translation given? Uh, chinu. I don't know what that word means. Kemo ne arjibo arta. How will I earn? How will I get money? How will I get fame and recognition? How will I arrange for the marriage of my sons and daughters? Of course, that's one thing that in America parents don't have to worry about. <laughs> Because the sons and daughters either get married by themselves or they don't get married at all. But in traditional culture, the, it is the parents' duty to get their children married, especially their daughters. It is a, respond, a very serious responsibility. Ebe atashamarpane chinta nahi a. Tumi nirbahibe prabhu shamsatoma. But now that I have surrendered to you, I have no more worries. Because I, I offered everything to you, so my household, it's all yours. It's all your responsibility. You have to look after it. You will look after it. You will supply everything. Tumito palibe more nijodasojani. You will maintain me, considering me your own servant. Toma shivai prabhu varo shukamani. And in your service, O Lord, I uh, admit that it's very blissful. Toma ichai prabhu shabkar johai. By your desire, O Lord, Everything, all, all my work is done. Everything gets done. Jibale koriyami shaito shatanoi. And if, if anyone says, I'm doing it, that's not true. 
What can the individual soul do? Unless you do it. Actually, you are doing it. The, the, the jiva, or the soul, simply desires and whether or not his desire is fulfilled, that's up to you. So, man proposes, God disposes. Uh, I'm, I serve you, I will serve you without anxiety and whether things go on well in my home or not, it's not my responsibility. But you know, Thakur hmm. said. But you know, giving up his own independence, he has become a kincha without anything else. He is at your lotus feet. He has nothing but service to your lotus feet. So this may sound like a hippie mentality, something like that. That I don't care. I'm just. I'm, every, I'm not taking responsibility. But actually, Bhaktivinoda you know, Thakur, if we see his life, he was very responsible. He did execute all his duties. He was a... well, he did, went through various things, but uh, he ended up as a magistrate. He reached the highest possible position that the British would allow an Indian to come to in the civil service. They didn't want them to go too high. So he was a magistrate, which... Uh, it doesn't sound like a very high post, but actually, in those in the British India, the, the magistrate's post was a very high position. He was working very closely with the uh, British, with the highly placed British officers. So he did do all his duties very nicely. He did look after his family. He had. I, I should have looked it up, uh, 13 children like that, although one died, the first one died in infancy, and then another one died when he was quite young, he was newly married. So, that attitude is there, that I am not the doer, everything is in Krishna's hands. But at the same time, a devotee should, as Rupa Goswami says, not be negligent in worldly affairs. That means if you're a hydrologist with the state government, you have to do your work properly, isn't it? It would be irresponsible not to do so. So, let's see. You all got the song sheet now? Okay. Have you all got the song sheet? Dara putra nidja deha kutumba palane Sharvada bekula rami Sinumane mani
তুমি নিজে হবে I just read the next one. I didn't print it out, but it's it's somewhat well known. But it's such a such a sweet sentiment that I feel like reading it out. He says, but in Otapa, in the in the next song, which you don't have printed out. He says that I have offered or surrendered everything at your lotus feet and fallen down at your at your home. You are the Lord and I'm your dog. Just consider me like that. Tie me up next to your home. Tie me uh, Aye. Yeah, tie me up now. And you will maintain me and I will stay just at your gate. And any one who's inimical to you, any enemies come, I won't allow them to come. I'll keep them out at the moat. Because in the traditional Bengali homes in the village there's a moat. Which I guess stops. I don't know, it might discourage snakes and things like that from coming in. So, uh, all your family members, Nijajan, I will take their whatever's, whatever's left over, your family, whatever, what they've eaten, their meal, whatever you have left over, I'll take that. 
as my food with great bliss every day. I, I will I will sometimes sit, sometimes lie down at your lotus feet and think about you always. And when you call me, I'll rush rush up to you, dancing and dancing, very happily. Just like the dog when the master calls and jumps up. <laughs> Very happy to see. My my maintenance, I'll never worry about it, just like a dog doesn't worry how am I gonna get my next meal. Right? I simply won't worry about it. But I'll simply be uh, all the time filled up with ecstatic love for you. Bhaktivinod, considering you the maintainer has uh, accepted this position. So, these, these are all songs from Sharanagati. It's a collection of songs which explain and amplify the position of a devotee surrendering or surrendered to Krishna. So, we can discuss it technically and Bhaktivinoda Thakur does in many of his writings, he discusses very scientifically, you say, very systematically, the whole process of bhakti. But in these songs he brings it out also, but just as he says, Rahibo Bhavera Bhari, and always he always remaining full of just absolutely filled up with blissful feelings for Krishna. So these songs of Bhaktivinoda Thakur there simply filled with his bliss and we can get that by his mercy, by singing. So let's sing another one. What's the next one? Which one is it? Ekon Bhujino. Is it? Begins like that? Ekon Bhujino. Is that it? Did you find it? Yeah. You all have. You only have one sheet of here. Is that enough for enough for three of you? Huh? They're all mixed up. Well, yeah. All right. We'll try and find it. What is it? Ekon Pujino Prabhu Toma Charan. Yeah, you can sort it out, huh? Okay, very good idea. In the meantime, we can discuss the meaning. Now, O oh Lord, I have understood that your lotus feet are at every moment full of the nectar of fearlessness and ashok, which means non-lamentation. What's the word for non-lamentation non in English? Freedom from anxiety. Huh? Jubilation, yeah. It, it's, it's not really jubilation. It's a, it's a negative term, isn't it? Anyway, freedom from sadness. Mm. Anyway, yeah. Ashok literally means free, no lamentation. So, there's no lamentation at Krishna's lotus. Yeah, giving up everything else, I have, O oh Lord, fallen at your lotus feet. Your lotus feet, O oh Lord, will protect me. There is no other protector within this material world of birth and death. I am your eternal servant. This time I have understood this. Now, 
the responsibility for maintaining me is yours. By uh, by attempting to be independent of you, I simply got lots of misery. I became very miserable. But that misery has gone far away by accepting your lotus feet. Those lotus feet which the goddess of fortune performed much austerity in order to attain, those lotus feet by which Lord Shiva, whose name means auspicious, gained his auspicious, he became auspicious because of those lotus feet. Those lotus feet by which Lord Brahma, the creator of the universe, became successful, or he had his mission fulfilled, that uh, those feet by which Narad Muni, by uh, which Narad Muni holds in his heart, uh, those lotus feet, I hold, holding them on my head, I, in great bliss, I, I dance, singing the glories of the of your lotus feet. All the dangers and troubles within this material world, I will certainly be delivered uh, from them. Because, Bhaktivinoda says, I have accepted those lotus feet. So it's a prayer in praise of Krishna's lotus feet, the protection offered by his lotus feet. In the Sri Vaishnav Sampradaya, there's, a, there's 1,000 Sanskrit verses in praise of Lord Vishnu's shoes or slippers, Paduka. How about that? I can't remember the name of it. This is Bhakti. <laughs> what great treasures we have. People are reading newspapers. Wasting their time, studying all kinds of nonsense, becoming excited over completely useless things. What wonderful things we have! So, we've got that now. Is everyone? You've got that? Oh, we don't need the sheets because we have the modern technology key jai. <laughs> when it's used in Krishna's service only. Otherwise, it's. Worse than useless. We're the only ones who know how to use it properly. Everyone is using it to spoil themselves and go to hell. But if we can use it to glorify Bhaktivinoda you know, Thakur, his glorification of Krishna, we don't even know how to glorify Krishna. The Acharyas are teaching us. So if we can use these facilities which materialistic people have invented, then that is the proper use of them. As Srila Prabhupada, in uh, dictating the nectar of devotion, he gave the example of yukta vairagya, or proper renunciation. <clears throat> he was using, at that time, what was state-of-the-art technology, dictaphone with a reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder. And Srila Prabhupada said that the person who invented this certainly didn't have any idea of using it for translating scriptures. But nevertheless, that person gets some benefit also. It's being used by all, for all kinds of things, but when Srila Prabhupada uses it for translating the nectar of devotion, that is a great contribution to the world. How are we doing? Yeah. You got it?
Yeah, okay. Is it big enough so that everyone can see it? You see it? Maybe it would be higher. If you can't see it, you can move a little closer. You probably have to be more than half a meter to come up quite close. Otherwise, if you have the song sheets, that's also okay. Is everyone okay? Looks like no one's moving. That means we hope you can see it. So please sing along as well as you can. I know it's difficult in a foreign language, but this, it's actually not a foreign language because English is a foreign language. For the soul, this is the real language. Gorya Bhasha, the language of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. By Bhaktisiddhanta Sri Thakur said that by speaking the Gorya language, the residents of Gora, they advance on the path to Goloka, the spiritual world. So the residents of Gora is generally taken to mean Bengal, but it doesn't mean every rickshaw driver in Bengal, by speaking Bengali, they become spiritually advanced. But by reading Chaitanya Charitamrita, Chaitanya Bhagavat, and Bhaktivinoda you know, Thakur's song, we become advanced on the path to Goloka. Is there any Bengali here? No. All right. Well, they're all trying to become Goryas. What does Gorya mean? Anyone know? The uh, apparent etymological meaning is resident of Bengal, because the old name of Bengal, or West Bengal, is Gorya. Then, uh, Gorya Vaishnav is the term used for Vaishnavs who are followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Although the modern scholars like to say Chaitanya Vaishnavism, but within the tradition itself we don't say that, we say Gorya. And the uh, esoteric meaning is a follower of Lord Chaitanya means Pakistan, so it means a devotee of Radhara, that's the meaning. So, this is Gorya Bhasha, or the language of the Goryas, which is meant for glorification of Krishna. So, let's attempt that now. Let's sing to the same tune. Ekana Bhujinda Prabhu Kamarachanam Ashoka Bhayam Rita Purna Thank <laughs> you. 
After the sixth verse, do we have numbers on here? Yeah. After the sixth verse, so when I sing it, you can come to Albert. Be ready, please. You sing the same tune. I know the Sing another tune. Isn't that a, a happy tune? <laughs> it's, a, it's a bit different, though, it's a little, not quite such a long line. Anyway, you know Atasham Arpanetelabi. Oh, I should give the translation. Oh, you got the translation right there. Okay, now you can read it. Should I? Should we read it out first anyway? Yes. Sir. Okay, so please read it. You have a loud voice, I guess. Is it? Okay, please read it. Surrendering my soul. All right. Another. 
has lifted from me the burden of false pride. Nor only will I try to provide for my own sake. I know that you will be protection to your treasured possessions, O Lord. I now understand <laughs> the mentality of your treasured cows safely maintained by your son. Can you lead your herds to passion or mind on the banks of the Yamuna River? You will call to them by softly breaking the food. Just reduce the size of the food. Not like that. You were going to do it. Why do you do it? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay. No. Okay, go on. Number four. Can you read it? I'll read it. By slaying great demons such as Aghasura and Bakasura, you will always provide full protection. O Kana. Kana is a nickname for Krishna. Of, o Kana of the cowherd settlement. The Kaliya serpent's venom poisoned the Jamuna's waters, yet that poison will be vanquished. You will purify the Yamuna and by such heroic deeds enhance our faith. Uh, this here doesn't mean enhance our faith, just like we have on the condition stage we have we have uh, we might have doubts about Krishna and then become strong, but this talking about the inhabitants of Vrindavan, it, it's it's a different uh, level altogether. It just means that uh, the inhabitants of Vrindavan, they think of Krishna as a helpless boy, but when they see him again and again uh, delivering or the, the, the inhabitants of Vrindavan from big demons, then they become very confident. Oh, Krishna will protect us. He's got some. He's got some special blessing from God. That's what they think. They don't know he's God himself. Mm. So you will surely protect me by swallowing the forest fire. Thus you are called Gopal, protector of the cows, and Govinda, pleaser of the cows. Yeah. In order to curb the malice of Indra, king of the demigods. You will protect me from his torrents of rain, O lifter of the mighty Govardhan hill. When the four-headed Brahma abducts me along with your coward boyfriends and calves, then also you will surely protect me, O Gokula Hari. Bhaktivinoda is now the property of Gokul, your holy abode. O Kesha, kindly protect him with gentle loving care. Mm. So in this series of songs, in Sharanagati, there are six divisions of surrender to Krishna. So this is the this particular song comes. It's one in a series expressing the uh, faith in Krishna's protection. Krishna will surely protect me. Abhasya Rocky be Krishna Vishash. Palam, he will certainly Krishna will protect me in his faith. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur, in all these songs, he sings some from the perspective of conditioned souls and some from the perspective of liberated souls. So this is all from the perspective of a cowherd boy of Vrindavan. And Bhaktivinoda Thakur uh, presents himself as a cowherd boy in this song. Which is interesting because in many other, well, in several other songs he presents himself actually as a gopi. Well, so this is all my high level, but this is the gift of Bhaktivinoda that he will, by singing his songs, then we can go to the level that he has he has descended from to take us up there. The, the, the great devotees, they come into this world. When we, we say avatar, they come down, but they don't... It means they appear among us. They don't really come... To, they're still in the spiritual world by their consciousness. 
So we've heard about bridge preaching, or well, bridge preaching means that the Acharyas, they are the bridge which by which we can go to the spiritual world. That's the real bridge preaching. To go from here to the spiritual world. The Acharyas, they, they take us. They're, they're apparently in this world, but they don't, they're not really part of it at all. <clears throat> there was one uh, professor who used to regularly visit Bhaktivinoda Thakur. And after Bhaktivinoda Thakur had passed away, uh, he came to one function at the Goryamat, the institution founded by Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur, who superficially appeared as the son of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, although he never used to address him as father. He always saw him as his guru, as a completely spiritual personality. He never related to him as a, as a son would relate to a father. So, uh, this professor made some statements which uh, expressed his improper understanding of Krishna consciousness. And Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasari Thakur is famous as Rupa Nogami Rudha Apasiddhanta Hari, he who removes the darkness of the wrong conclusions of devotional service, those that are opposed to those of Rupa Goswami. So that professor became subject to some harsh words at which he said that, well, Bhakti you know, never spoke to me like this. He appreciated me. He used to feed me nicely and he offered me great respect and Bhakti Stansa Swatis. He said, You never saw Bhakti Vinod in your life. He said, well, what are you talking about? I visited so I visited his home so many times. And you were there also. You know that I saw him many times. Bhakti Stansa Swatis said, You never saw him. You th you thought that you could see him with your eyes, but you cannot see him by your eyes. You took him to be a person of this material world and you, you thought that you were seeing some magistrate or some member of the Bengali middle class, but actually you could never see him. So, Padrino Thakur is not a person of this material world, although he kindly appears within it to take us to the spiritual world. So in, in several of his songs, he describes his uh, sentiments. Uh, sentiment not in the sense of being sentimental in a cheap way, but his divine sentiments as a surrendered soul to Krishna, as a pure devotee of Krishna in the spiritual world. So this is one of those songs, and we'll sing this. <coughs> Ata Shama Pane Nikala Omniman. I'm too high. I went up, went off it. Ata Shama Pane Nikala Omniman. Nahi Karabu Nijana Kadiman. Thank <laughs> you. 
speaks about becoming a female <laughs> in Vrindavan. So that's giving up the idea of being a male and becoming a female, becoming a maidservant. Anyway, we'll go on to, uh, yeah, the next subject is giving up that which is uh, detrimental to bhakti that which obstructs devotional service. So we go on to that, to a bhakti pratikul, cool. that's three songs, three songs down. Well, oh, you got it, all right, very good. All right. 
Bhaktivinoda sings, I will assuredly abandon with utmost endeavor all things in which aversion to your devotional service is inherent. I will not keep company to, with those opposed to your devotional service, nor even look at the faces of those inimical toward Lord Gauranga. I will never reside at a place unfavorable for devotional practices, and I will never take pleasure in non-devotional activities. I will read no book opposed to pure devotion. These are all good instructions for us, aren't they? Nor listen to any scriptural explanation which counters pure devotional principles. I will never regard as sacred any place where Lord Gauranga is rejected. All knowledge or action hindering pure devotional service I consider worthless. <coughs> any seasonal observance which poses obstacles to the execution of devotional service finds no favor with me. Just like, for instance, uh, there is the Navaratri in India, which is nine, it's a big festival in North India especially, which is dedicated to the worship of Mataji or Durga. So that is not favorable to devotional service to observe that. Of course, it could be observed in another way by praising her as the uh, servant of Krishna. But in general, it's a materialistic function, especially nowadays. It's become very materialistic. So devotees, they don't... I mean, before it used to be religious, but now it's just out and out. It's like Christmas it used to be religious at one time, but now it's just a... It's just an excuse to eat and drink and forget the message of Jesus. So, that's an example. Uh, and I consider a string, this is a very important line, Bhakti Bahi Mok Nija Jane Jani Pur. I consider as strangers or outsiders all my own relatives or family members who are averse to devotional service. I will totally abandon all desires that hinder devotion and I will never touch foodstuffs offered to me by non-devotees. I vow to carefully avoid whatever I know to be contrary to devotional service. This is a most definite proclamation. Bhakti Vinod falls down at the feet of the Lord and begs for the strength to give up all things that are unfavorable to pure devotion. So this is... Yeah, prati, Pratikul Yasya Varajana. This comes under the, under the heading of that which is Pratikul is Varja to be given up. That which is detrimental to Bhakti. <coughs> That happy tune doesn't seem, it's a bit of a severe song, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Maybe we should sing it another tune. Can you think of another tune? To a bhakti prati cool, that's a morning tune. To a bhakti prati cool, dharma jate vai. To a bhakti prati cool, Oh, <laughs> 
It's about six songs previous to this. Which one? It begins Saravasva Toma. It's in the uh, it's in this section Parnam. Well, just go back. So look for Sarvasva Tomar. 
S A R V A S V A. Oh, that's a word. Oh, I know it has no wonder it's not in there. <laughs> I have to look in. Uh, I, I, it may be too much trouble. To think. I don't even know if it's in the Bhaktivedanta Veda base. It is? Tomasra Toma. Put Toma with a with an asterisk after it. No, it won't it won't be in you won't be in this word file. You have to go to the Veda base. Okay. Yeah, look in the... Uh, oh, I don't know where it's going to be. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Do you ever know where it's going to be? The song of the Shema Jairus? The song of the Pino Dhaka? No, this is a small song. Stop one? No, no, no. Put an asterisk for a string search. No, not an asterisk. Uh, apostrophe. Single? No, not one. No, no, no. Pop mark, yeah. Saravasva. Saravasva. S V A. The next word. Toma, T O N A R, then uh, asterisk. No, it's only one. Yeah, put an asterisk, it's still one. Okay. Okay, hit OK. And if you're in luck, you'll have the whole song. Then go to document up at the top. Okay, done. I got it. Shara Shatoma Chara Nishantiya Arechi Toma Nagare Shara Shatoma I started again. What's the uh, what's the power? Is it?
He gave us the Bhakti Vedanta means all his books. Bhakti Siddhanta is the proper understanding of those books, and Bhakti Vinod is the bliss of Bhakti. <laughs> so Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. It's all the songs, we just sang them all. By chanting, we just recited all the Vedas by chanting the Maha Mantra. All the Vedas, everything is there. <laughs> What's that verse? Rig Veda, Tasama Veda, Yajur Veda, Piyatar Vanaha, Adhita Stena, Yeno Kam Hariyam, Ityakshara Dvayam. One who says these two syllables, Ha, Ri. 
In doing so, it's understood. They studied all the four Vedas. Hari. <laughs> so, on that hopeful note, we'll finish this little session. Does anyone have any questions, comments, or anything they'd like to add before Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur's prasadam is distributed? Yes, please. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur is so amazing, world affairs and all these things. So, how, how does a person